So I'm not in community with many of the women from the Caucasus Mountains, if you know what I mean. <laughs> because they're usually just not safe. I don't have the patience to deal with and navigate the many things that they weaponize. Whiteness, tears, feminism, police. It's always like landmines just waiting under the surface to blow up that exposes how much they don't know about their privilege and power. A lot of Black people enjoyed being slaves back when slavery was a thing. It can just make socializing with them uncomfortable. I got to give some nuance to that. Because I'm not in community with them, their harms to me don't reach the quantity or the gravity of other demographics. Okay, so yes, there are other demographics that have harmed me directly more than them because, you know, they don't really get the chance to harm me as much because I'm not really in community with them. Feel what I'm saying? <laughs> I actually can make a choice to not be in community with them. But they have been the most consistent in being harmful in ways that are subtle. They're not big traumas, but these small, subtle microaggressions, sometimes we call them that, money situations, work situations. These subtle little ways make socializing with them quite toxic when I am in their vicinity. Let me give you some examples. No, I've never been robbed or sexually assaulted by a white woman. I've the, the, the gr Remember, the gravity of their harm is never huge. Every person that has tried to negotiate me into and convince me into being underpaid at work has been one of them. Many of the times when I am out at a restaurant or some public gathering, having fun with my friends. If there's a person who is trying to police our fun, who is trying to police our tone, police how we are navigating this public space, it is usually one of them. If I'm on a plane and somebody has their feet up against the window next to my seat, it's usually one of them. If someone is trying to praise me for how articulate I am for being a black girl, it is usually one of them. You see what I'm saying? It's these socially awkward, subtle ways that is harmful. It's not big, but it's consistent, like all the time, consistent. <laughs> more consistent than any other demographic. These type of harms come from them. And one thing, working with them on a professional level, one thing that it has taught me is that they will overstep their boundaries of you every chance they get. They will take something too far. They will police you when they don't need to police you. They will talk to you like they're your boss when they're not. Okay, I wanted to be very clear. It's not about asserting themselves. I think every woman should practice asserting themselves. I'm talking about situations where they don't need to assert themselves with me. For example, let's say that one of my colleagues, we're all in a room and we are all on the same level. One of my colleagues asked me my opinion about somebody's presentation and i say hmm i think the presentation was quite informative but you know it was kind of boring i'm a type of person that is very direct like that and what would happen is this white woman would jump in the conversation and say oh that was kind of rude you don't have to be so shady about it you could have said it like this as if I need her to teach me how to talk about anything 
when it comes to my opinion. No, I said the words that I wanted to say. I don't need you to help me communicate my thoughts. It was informative and it was boring. But then I have to set a boundary because out of respect for myself, I have to let you know that I don't need you to talk to me like that. So no, I, I meant what I said and I don't need help stating my opinion. That's what I wanted to say. And then that is going to make me seem like the angry black woman, the manly, aggressive black trans woman. I Now I'm in a position where I, because I set a boundary, I'm negative because she's going to, by conditioning, immediately go into damsel in distress. Oh, oh, did, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, oh did I offend you? Oh, that's not what I meant. And so everybody around her is now, based on conditioning, especially men, they're going to come to her defense and not mine. Or not ignore it. Because now she has made it an emotional distress thing. So now they're going to have to feel like they got to come in and mediate this situation. When they don't, I'm going to graystone. Graystone it is when you don't emotionally respond to somebody. You just, okay, and move on. Because that emotionality is manipulation. And it's one of their conditioned tactics to use when they are in distress. So navigating that is quite laborious and toxic and it is something that i check immediately like i don't let it slide ever i immediately check them because in my past any time that i have been delicate and was manipulated by that emotionality or i just let it go and roll off my back they go further they go, they do something else. They go again, it gets worse. But when I check them, yes, they're going to get all emotional and do all that kind of bullshit. But for me, I'm going to set that boundary, hold it and move on. And they know in the future that they got to let that go. <laughs> they, they can't just railroad me and say what they want out of their mouth to me. I'm not going to play with you. And you're not going to play with me. You're not going to give me no problem. I'm not going to have no problem with you. Those emotions don't work on me. You need to be accountable for your behavior. And you need to watch how you talk to me.